recall. So once we have some results from postural assessment, pelvic alignment, and any other forms of tests that we might be doing, um, one further check if there are any misalignments is obviously the next step is to find out what the possible causes are. One of those may be um, a, an alteration in what we call firing patterns of related groups of muscles. So the first movement that we're going to ask Jay to perform is hip extension and we will compare the limbs. What should happen here is that um, the gluteal muscles and the hamstring muscles should work together to be able to extend the hip. Now what sometimes happens is that we find one of those muscle groups is dominant and fires either more strongly or even before the other group and that will in itself create an imbalance and of course if we had uh, a pelvic misalignment that may be the reason behind it. So we're going to check now um, on Jade's left leg first of all and all I'm going to do is palpate just lightly on the surface of both the gluteal muscles and the hamstring muscles and what I'm feeling for is which muscle contracts first. So it's nothing to do with how strongly at the moment. So Jay, can you just lift this leg off the couch, please? And down. And you may be able to see this, I'm not sure, on the camera. But let's just go one more time. Okay. Now I can feel very definitely that the hamstrings and you may be able to see as well that the hamstrings are con contracting and working much harder. Um, the gluteal muscles here are really not working very much at all. Let's just check on the right hand side and see whether that's consistent because often you'll get one side working very differently to the other. And very similar sort of pattern here. Let's just relax so you can see the softness of the glutes and the hamstrings. And again, just lift. So very strong contraction here with the hamstrings, really not much happening at all with Jade's gluteal muscles. So if you get this sort of scenario, the next question is, what do we do about it? How can we get the gluteal muscles retrained so that they're working with the hamstrings during normal movement patterns and gait cycles with hip extension? Um, the simple answer is, if you can, try and change or disadvantage the dominant muscle group so that the other muscle group has to do more of the work. And so in this instance, with the leg doing a straight leg lift, the hamstrings are able to do most of the work. If we shorten the hamstrings by flexing the knee to 90 degrees um, and then palpate, what I'm going to ask Jay to do now is lift this foot towards the ceiling. So just show me that movement. Okay, put the knee down, and you can perhaps see she's, it's not a smooth movement pattern, so she's already struggling with that. If I now palpate, and again, what's happening now is that the hamstrings are still trying to do all the work, but they can't physically extend the hip on their own, so rather late, the gluteal muscles are firing because they've simply got to join in for this movement. And you can see how uh, sort of jumpy that movement is with Jade. And if I gave her perhaps five or six reps to do with that, she would probably start fatiguing very quickly indeed. So I would recommend for Jade that she goes away and does those types of exercises on a consistent basis, a daily basis, to try and retrain and re-educate this muscle uh, with hip extension. The next movement we can do is to check back extension and now we're looking at and palpating for the relationship in another pair of groups of muscles with the back extensors and the gluteal muscles. So what should happen here is the, the gluteal muscles have to, to contract either before or simultaneously with the back extensors in order to stabilise the pelvis and provide a firm anchor from which the back extensors can do their work and bring the chest 
off the couch. So for this exercise, I'm just going to ask Jade in a moment if she can lift her chest off the couch in a nice steady fashion. I again will palpate these two areas. It's a bit more subtle in this instance, particularly feeling for the back extensors. And what we need now is somebody to assist by just holding the ankles steady. Otherwise both the legs and the chest will come off the couch and that will be a difficult movement. So, Jade, when you're ready, can you just gently lift your... Okay, and down. Just relax, and again. And once again, just as we found with this pair of muscles or groups of muscles, the gluteal muscles were weak, uh, the same is true here. So the back extensors are firing quite strongly. Uh, but the gluteal muscles are not doing much to contribute. So if we just check again on the right hand side, Jade when you're ready, and a very similar sort of thing is going on here, I can feel under this hand a very strong contraction, in fact she's not relaxing very well now, just relax, that's it, good. Okay, let's see that movement once more, and again this is contracting very strongly, and the gluteal muscles um, are not working at all. So what's happening here, you probably saw by the range of movement from Jade, in trying to lift her chest off the couch, she wasn't able to extend the back very far. That's because with these muscles uh, being weak or not firing properly, the pelvis will now tilt forward as these muscles contract. So they will bunch up like so, pull on the iliac crest, that will tilt the pelvis forward into an anterior position and by doing that the back is already extending um, before she's even attempted to move and therefore she's never going to be able to extend the back far from that position whilst uh, the pelvis is tilted anteriorly. Okay, we're now going to move on and do leg abduction and turn, that's it. Okay, so from this position, we're just going to get Jade to do a side leg lift to abduct the leg. And I'm going to feel the relationship between the abductors here and what the back muscles here, particularly QL, erector spina, and so on, are doing to stabilize the pelvis. Once again, they should work either simultaneously or just before these muscles to stabilise the pelvis and allow this leg to move through a reasonable range. So I'm just going to palpate here and when you're ready just lift your leg and down and again. Okay, are you comfortable with that movement? Yeah? Okay, one more time. Okay, and there's a reasonably good relationship between these muscles these seem to be firing, I would say, momentarily after the back muscles. So these are working to stabilize first. Um, again, if that didn't happen and these were weak, then what would happen was as the abductors contract, they will pull the pelvis into a laterally tilted position, moving like that. And that will prevent Jade being able to lift the leg very far at all. She will have a much poorer range. Okay. Um, you can just turn onto your back, one last muscle that we would look at, and then you can do this with any pairs of muscles around any joint action, but another important one that we would look at is the firing pattern of vastus medialis oblique. Uh, they should fire with the rest of the quadriceps group, and we would simply get somebody to do an isometric contraction of the quadriceps we will look for the muscle definition there. Jade's clearly got good definition for VMO there. Just relax. And one more time. And they are firing simultaneously with the rest of the group. Um, if that wasn't happening, then we would have some cause for concern because that might be causing a maltracking of the patella and creating a, a patellofemoral syndrome.